Wow. <laughs> what an unbelievable game of football. Brighton 2, Manchester United 3. But the scoreline only tells you a small part of the story because this was one of the most exciting finishes in the history of the Premier League. And it all finished in the 100th minute after referee Chris Cabana had blown the full-time whistle with Brighton thinking they'd secured a 2-2 draw. But the referee was persuaded by VAR to have a look at the touchline monitor because the final header from Harry Maguire, which was headed off the line by Solly March, had been handled by Neil Mopé. And when the referee looked at the pictures, there was no doubt about it. A clear penalty and upstepped Bruno Fernandes. Ice cool Bruno Fernandes. He buried the ball into the net and jubilant scenes of celebration as United players celebrated a 3-2 win. What a shame there were no supporters inside this stadium because this would have been an unbelievable atmosphere. A game that had everything from the start. United were uh, dominated by Brighton in the opening half an hour when uh, Brighton hit the woodwork three times. But then United showed a flash of their brilliance when they had the ball in the net. A 1-2-3 from the front three of Martial, Rashford and Greenwood. Greenwood buried the ball in the net, but Rashford, who provided the assist, was clearly offside. And then Brighton, moments later, took the lead when Bruno Fernandes was guilty of a, a foul when he brought down, uh, well, he, he knocked over Lamptey as he surged into the box. He just got a touch and it was uh, a penalty to Brighton. And Mopé took the kick and he cheekily dinked the ball into the back of the net, sending David De Gea the wrong way. A very uh, confident start by uh, Brighton and a very confident finish by the penalty taker to give Brighton a 1-0 lead. But it was our skipper, Harry Maguire, who forced the equaliser just a few moments later before half-time. A free kick by Bruno Fernandes making amends and Matic at the byline intelligently turned the ball back in. Maguire forced the ball home. I think the, uh, the final touch, it was given as an own goal to Lewis Dunk, but United went in at the interval 1-1. And already a fantastic pulsating game at half-time, although United clearly second best and looking out of sorts, but showing the spirit to keep in this game, and it was a spirit that kept us fighting to the end. To be honest, in the second half, we were much improved, but the pivotal moment in this game came when a penalty was awarded against Paul Pogba when he challenged the onrushing Aaron Canelli. But on a second look at VAR, the decision was overturned and Paul Pogba's yellow card will be rescinded. And that was a key moment because Brighton, if they'd taken the lead at that point, they probably would have gone on to win the game. And to be honest, in the second half, we were much improved. And then uh, Marcus Rashford delivered a piece of genius. It was almost like watching Georgie Best when he weaved through a sea of Brighton defenders, sending defenders this way and that, turning them inside out and then buried his shot in the back of the net to put United 2-1 in the lead. And for the rest of the game, it was United hanging on, to be honest. Paul Pogba went off and Fred came in to uh, help shore up the, uh, the uh, strength at the back because Pogba wasn't his best performance and he's still probably not fully fit, but uh, we needed a little bit more in the defensive quarters in the, uh, in the final stages. And Brighton, nonetheless, kept creating chances and it was chance after chance after chance. Chossard hit the woodwork again. He had a hat-trick of chances against the woodwork, hitting both posts and the crossbar, but failing to find the net. And it looked like United had hung on when it got into the 90th minute. We went into injury time and David De Gea made a fabulous save from point blank to keep United's lead at 2-1. And it looked like it was all over. But then, in the 95th minute, five minutes into injury time, stealing in at the far post, Brighton got the equaliser from Solly March. Brighton celebrated the uh, Harry Potter, I can't remember his first name, Harry Potter, the Brighton <laughs> manager, ran. he couldn't believe it. He thought he'd uh, got, a, got a draw and uh, Brighton thought they'd got a draw. But United, United kept on going and we went into the uh, 99th minute. Harry Maguire had a header and uh, it was deflected by the arm of Mopé who clearly put his hand forward and it was headed off the line by March who thought he'd scored the equaliser five minutes earlier. But when the referee uh, went to see the pitch line monitor, it was clearly a penalty. And Bruno Fernandes does what he does best. He has nerves of steel and he made it 3-2. So what a fantastic win for United and making up for uh, bouncing back from the embarrassment of the home defeat against Crystal Palace. This was a perfect result, but not the perfect performance despite that spirited 
you know, come back despite United fighting to the end. The honest truth is United need to improve if we're going to do anything this season. And clearly we need to strengthen in the transfer market before the window closes in just over a week's time. Ole Gunnar, De Ole Gunnar Solskjaer deserves the backing of the board. If the board fail to give him any quality signings before the transfer window closes, it will be a dire dereliction of duty. Because United have come up, come up a rung last season when we got into third place. We did fantastically well with a, with a thin squad, to be honest. A thin but promising squad full of young talents and a few quality players. But we need more signings. We've done great to uh, get Danny van der Beek, who came on for the final few moments and was there when United won the game. But Danny van der Beek on his own is not what we need. We need at least two or three more new signings, as many prominent former Manchester United players have said, including Gary Neville and Patrice Evra, most forcibly in recent days. We all know that United need more signings. We all know that Oli needs backing. Oli is the man. Oli has done fantastic. And I believe in Oli. I think most of the fans believe in Oli. And Oli can deliver. But this is a competitive Premier League. A lot of our rivals have gone out and spent big money. There's no reason why United can't spend big money. I know they've talked about the coronavirus changing everything. But the reality is we've got the money. We've got to go out there and spend if we want to challenge at the top of the table and challenge for honours this season. You know, I'm not writing United off on the transfer market. OK, they've left it late. And to be honest, in all honesty, we should have had players in already because the season started and Oli needs to prepare with new players. He needs a strengthened squad. He knows he wants... He do, he's already said he wants, a, he wants new signings. He's made it clear. He's got to be careful what he says about the owners because he can't be too critical. We're not going to be in a Mourinho situation where the manager is going to be slagging off the board every five minutes. Ollie's working with what he's got. And I know he'll carry on, even if there are new signings. If, even if there are no new signings, he'll do his best. And uh, we've got a squad that when we're fit, when all the players are firing on the 100%, we can beat anybody in this league. But the truth is, this is a competitive league. It's going to be a very busy season, truncated uh, with a shorter duration than normal because of the uh, pandemic, of course. So there's going to be matches coming thick and fast. And we've got the Champions League, of course. So there's no doubt about it. We need to strengthen the squad. I hope we can strengthen the squad. We've got just over a week to go. But in the meantime, let's just relish this score line. And I'm going to bring it up so you can see for yourself. Those are the goal scorers. That's the score. Brighton 2, Manchester United 3. The Reds go marching on. Come on, United.